Hey guys, good morning. It is Monday. We have the beginnings of the solar eclipse behind me. I wanted to come out here and record a little bit of it. I'm not feeling good today. I am, my anemia is catching up with me because whenever it is that fun time of the month, I get really anemic and I get um, just really, really tired. So I am outside needing some sun. I normally come outside. Rocky's over there chomping on a, <laughs> a snack I gave him. He was really excited me coming outside. I don't normally come outside too much. Sun is not good for me, but um, I am chilling. I'm going to be doing a video chat with my book bestie later on today. I'll probably try and record a little bit of that, but the solar eclipse started already. Um, so I'm going to be crocheting, but I'm going to flip my camera long way so you can watch me crochet and watch the eclipse at the same time. It's supposed to last about three hours and somebody, they're joking around right now on the internet saying that it's supposed to be an earthquake. I don't know how true that is, uh, but a lot of people, scientists, people on the news are just like, yeah, it's going to, you know there's an earthquake happening, but I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm just here by myself chilling. The kids are at school, first day back from spring break, so it's just me and Rocky today, and we are good with that. So I'm in my backyard, chilling. He's probably gonna come in and out of screen when he's done with his snacks. I'll give him more little snackies. He's got his water, his food bowl over there, so. I'm gonna drink some water, hydrate. I'm gonna flip the camera, stay. <laughs> you don't wanna be on camera? <laughs> he walked away. What? No, no, not on my yarn. So, but, all right guys, I, he just wanna be on camera, he just, He's just staring at me, lying down. It's just a truck. Now that I'm out here, he's being very visual. Visual, visual, visual. He's paying attention to everything. <laughs> All right, guys, give me a minute. I'll flip you around. We'll do some crocheting and time lapse for the eclipse.
have to like zoom in right now. Uh, I think the totality is over. over, but check this out. I don't know if you can tell, but those lines, look at those, no, I'm showing you like these waves of lines going through. It's a little blurry, no. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So it's like waves. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, it's over now, like the totality of it. Hey guys, Book Talk Tuesday. We are going to talk about Jennifer L. Armentrout today, and I'm going to be pretty quick about it because I need to go eat lunch. I'm exhausted. I need more water, and I just want to get through today. Um, my anemia has been kicking my butt the last couple of days, and I just want to lie down. But I'm going to be crocheting my McCall Wing Shawl by Miho Crochet. Oh, wrong side. Um, if you guys are interested in this pattern or any of our other patterns, go ahead and click on the link that link that I have down below in the description description box. Like I said, I just <laughs> it's bad right now. It's bad. So, um, but Jennifer L. Armentrout uh, has been around for quite some time. I am reading from Blood and Ash, and I love. I have been reading, I have been reading Jennifer L. Armentrout for quite some time, since 2014. Uh, she has several series out there, but I will let you guys in on at least three of them that I have read in the past and that I continue to read over and over again because I just love her writing. And I knew that when From Blood and Ash came out that I was going to love the series and she did not disappoint. Now, I did try to read the series last year after I read uh, Fourth Ring and Iron Flame, but because I was going from one world to the other, I kind of book crashed and I went into a book funk in a drought and I couldn't read very much of anything. So any kind of new book that I tried to get into, like uh, The Moon that one moon one that everybody's raving about right now and another dragon's fire flame or something like that couldn't get into those um i think it and then i tried from blood and ash but it was just like difficult for me to get into it so i went back and i re-listened to uh the wicked series that she has and that helped me transition out of my book funk and i read city of brass and that helped me too because City of Brass, again, as well, I tried to read in the beginning, but I kept having to reread the beginning over and over and over again. And finally, I was just like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to push through. And I did, and it helped, and just, it got rid of my book block, and I was able to read that. So, but Jennifer L. Armentrout has a bunch of series out there, but these are the, you know, the three that I just love, love, love from her writings. And I love her writings. It's hard for me to defer from different people's writings and to get into a new one because if they're just starting out their their writing is a little rudimentary and it kind of catches me off guard it, it's not up to the standards that I keep it to so 
the first series. So it kind of ruins books for me. <laughs> and that's my own fault. You know, I get in my own way because I have high standards for as far as, you know, writing style. But Jennifer L. Armitrout has, you know, three series that I've already read, which is the Covenant series, the Lux series, and the Wicked series. Now it goes, it's it's so funny because it's Greek mythology in the Covenant series. Then it's the Lux series is an alien series. And then the Wicked is Faye. So you go from three different genres. And I started out in 2014, but I know the Lux series came out maybe 2011, 2010. Uh, the last book in that series, I believe, was published in 2012. And the first book of the Lux series was, I think, published in maybe 2014. So I I have been a part of the book club for her for a really long time. The Covenant series is Greek mythology. It talks about gods. It talks about, um, uh, what is it called? Oh, gosh. Um, demigods and then it talks about pure bloods and half bloods so it's like deity island it is this um covenant of people of a race of people that are created by gods and there's a hierarchy so you have the gods that created the demigods and the demigods that created the pure bloods now the pure bloods are um you know the demigods pure blood essence it's like they took their blood and gave it to a human and created the pure bloods and then those that race can wield uh, a single element each person can wield a single element and it's more common for an entire family to wield one element so like the whole family can wield a fire element it's not uncommon but it's very rare for a family to wield several different elements at a time so there's um also something called a apollyon. So if you're an apollyon, you're a half blood which is the product of a human and a pure blood. But because they created apollyon, they said that that wasn't allowed. The pure bloods put their foot down, but the gods were like, "Hey, we didn't have that rule. The pure bloods created that rule. That's that's on you guys." Cuz when the half blood started to get into servitude, uh, then that's when they started fighting back. And that's when the gods were like, Hey, I didn't create that rule. The pure bloods created that rule. So they, the pure bloods created a rule that is not really bad or, or like, it's not really a, a, a rule per se by the God. It's not a rule by the gods. So, so now the pure bloods and the half bloods are not allowed to mix. And so what happens <laughs> is that if they do mix, but it has to be a certain kind of mixture between a half-blood and a pure-blood that creates an Apollyon. Now, Apollyon can wield all four elements and they, and they have a fifth element where he takes all four elements and they creates a white ball, kind of like Dragon Ball Z, Hamehameha. He just like mixes them all together and he just like, ha, and disintegrates you. <laughs> and so the book follows a girl named Alexandria who her mom, for some reason, took her away from the covenant from Deity Island and hid her away for over two years. And her mom passes away because she gets unalived by this um, ether craving zombie. Now, these pure blood, somewhere along the way, a pure blood discovered that if they take the essence of another pure blood, they turn into these addicts. And now they're trying to take the ether from everybody who has any kind of God ether in them. And so her mom was, you know, dispatched by one of them. And so she dispatched the one who unalived her mom. And Alexandria just runs because there's two more chasing her now. So she's like crying because she has to leave her mom behind and she can't go, you know, do and, um, get her body and take her with her. So she like takes off and she's found by this other, um, covenant member named Aiden. And he, she remembers him because he was one of the top running elite, like warriors at Deity Island when she had left. 
Um, so when she comes back, she has to get back into training. He volunteers to train her. And, you know, he's a pure blood and she's a half blood. And it turns out her stepfather that her mom left as well is the president or like the mayor of Deity Island. And he, you know, and then her her uncle, who is her mom's brother, is another pure blood. And he is like the general or the captain of all of the people uh, that are training to fight these ether loving zombies. And so while training her, Aiden, you know, starts to fall for her as the thing goes. And they go through a journey of discovering the reasons why her mom took her away and the reason behind uh, why half-bloods and pure-bloods are not allowed to blend. So that is that Covenant story. And then there's the um, Lux series, and that is the Alien Race series. And Damon is the main uh, male role character, and then Katie is the main female character. Now, her mom, it's just her and her mom, just like the other series, you know. She doesn't know who her dad is in the Covenant series, but now the Lux series is more, is alien. So I have those two books. I don't have any of the other books on hand, but I, it's more, I think there's like six books or seven books in this series, but I do have Opposition, which is the fifth book. And then I do have Oblivion, which is Damon's point of view, uh, of all the other books that Katie has her point of view. Now it follows, you know, the life of Katie Schwartz and Damon Black, as their lives intertwine and the reason behind uh, her getting moving to the area because her uncle all of a sudden just out of the nowhere like gets cancer and within a week from discovering the cancer he passes away and so the mom who it, who it was her brother drives down there to Colorado and they live you know, and then Katie discovers, she's like, mom, we're the only ones that live on this neighborhood. And the mom's like, no, there's somebody that lives next door. And guess who lives next door? An alien race. <laughs> Clark Kent. So it, it goes like this. I, um, this is Damon's POV, but all the other books are in Katie's POV. So I'm going to read you. Uh, and, and the first book is called Obsidian. This one is called Oblivion. So I'm going to, and, and it, it, Oblivion follows, I think the first three books but not the other books because the other books are, I think, in both points of view. So let's get into this one. Uh, experience the epic love story of Obsidian as told by its hero, Damon Black. I knew the moment Katie Schwartz moved in next door, there was going to be trouble, lots of it. And trouble's the last thing I need since I'm not exactly from around here. My people arrived on Earth from Lux, a planet 13 billion light years away. Plus, if there's one thing I know, it's that humans can't be trusted. We scare them. We can do things they only dream about. And honestly, we make them look weak as hell. Because they are. The cat is getting to me in ways no one else has. And I can't stop myself from wanting her. Or wanting to use my powers to protect her. She makes me weak. And I'm the strongest of our kind. Tasked to protecting us all. So this one simple girl, she can mean the end for us. Because the Luxon have an even bigger enemy. The Aram. And I need to stay on my game. Falling for Katie, a human who uh, won't. Falling for Katie, a human, won't just place her in danger. It could get us all killed. And that's one thing I'll never let happen. So it follows Katie and Damon and their navigation, or like his navigation around of not telling her who he is or what, what he is. But inevitably, circumstances happen where she can't or he can't avoid telling her who he is because... He has saved her life. And once he saved her life, uh, something, a, a physical reaction happens to her. And because of that, it attracts the Aram. And now he has to physically protect her from Aram that constantly try to attack her. So it is a fun, loving alien story. And I think you guys should go check that out as well. The Lux series. And those books are called like, the Covenant series is like, it's, Damon, the prequel, and then it's Half Blood, Pure Blood, uh, Sentinel, let's see, Apollyon, and then Deity. I know it's not in the, the order, but in the Lux series, it's like Obsidian, Oblivion, 
uh, opal, onyx, and it's just different stones, okay? And I think those stones play in the book as well, in both books. She has a thing for stones because I know that in the, the first book with the covenant, Aiden collects these guitar picks and they're in every color. And the only color he's missing is onyx. And she buys him the onyx guitar pick. In the, um, the Lux series, it does also talk about um, stones, different stones as well. So now with the Wicked series, it's Faye. So it's about the underworld of the Fae and it takes place in New Orleans. It is a race of warriors called the Order and they have a branch in every state that prevent the Fae from crossing over into our world and doing damage and feeding off of humans. And uh, in order, they call us cows essentially because they feed off of us and that's how they stay alive longer. So it follows the story of, or this, it follows the life journey of uh, Ivy, who is an order member. And order members are a strong uh, race of humans. And it's not said how they get these powers, I don't think. But they, when the, the Fae cross over, they have this glamour that no humans can see because, of course, Fae are beautiful, you know, they're shiny, whatever. But order members can see through the glamour and they're, they're strong. They have the speed and the agility and the capability to defeat or eliminate any fae or just at least be almost on the same playing field as a fae. So Ivy goes out and she is on her route. You know, she's canvassing the streets to make sure there's no bad fae out there that is trying to feed off of a human. And she encounters one fae and she eliminates him. Well, she gets surprised by something called the ancient. She gets attacked by an ancient and he like shoots her and she was like, whoa, Faye don't shoot, they don't use, but he uh, magically produced this projectile weapon and he shoots her with it. And she is just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this just happened. So she just starts to run. She ends up at the order headquarters and that's where she meets Ren. And Ren is an elite from a different branch of the order. And he is a super secret kind of soldier where no one is supposed to know about him. But because uh, Ivy has been injured, she is off of duty for a while. So she has to escort Ren around and she has to show him, you know, the different things. But to her surprise, he already knew it all around because he's an elite member. So before he got there and announced his existence to the order or for to Dave, who is like the, the manager or like the, the basically the, the head honcho of the order in that branch. And so Ren had already knew the lay of the land because he got there. Like, I think it was like two weeks prior and he, you know, he, um, cased the joint. <laughs> so he is, uh, accepting of uh, Ivy helping him navigate the city, which he already knows, because he's attracted to her, because he thinks she looks like Merida from, <laughs> from Brave. And when he first tells her this, she was like, what? He, she thinks he's being condescending, but he's not. He's like really attracted to her. And he was like, what? I think Merida's hot. And she was like, you're comparing me to a Disney character. He was like, heck yes. And so it's funny because he lets her know that he's attracted to her, but she's all like standoff. She's like, get, uh, get away from me, fool. You know, like <laughs> back up, hun. So they discover while they're going on their routes and stuff like that, that she finds that, she, yes, she's attracted to him as well. So they become, you know, uh, lovers or boyfriend, girlfriend. They, they, so a relationship is created. And all through this, they discover something. And he tells her one thing important about the Fey world, that if the prince comes over and he couples with a half Fey, half order member, it is called a halfling. So if the prince couples with a halfling, he creates a baby. And if the baby is used, uh, when the baby gets older, he uses his hand 
to blow open or like the coupling or when the baby is born or I don't know exactly at what point in time the baby can create all of the 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 underworld doors to blow wide open after they've just shut them down. So it and it creates this chaos where it's like the change engine from um, Man of Steel in the first Henry Cavill Superman movie where they do the change engine and they start um, atmosphere transferring or something like that where they're like transferring um, Krypton's atmosphere into the world's atmosphere. So that's happening throughout the book and you notice that the foliage is dying, the temperature gets dropped and starts to freeze over, people get kidnapped and then um, doors are open and the prince is being prevented from coming through but there's there's just double crossings and you just you get to the point where you're just like ah and two with this book you know you follow Ren and Ivy but you also get introduced to many other characters so that is uh she creates more books for that as well so I'm really excited to get through from Blood and Ash. If you want to read the Wicked series, read that, you guys. Kindle Unlimited it has it on there. Um, Amazon Books. Audio has them all. And I don't know if the Nook app from Barnes & Noble, they don't. But because she has been rediscovered again, I want to say that because she's been around for a while. But because From Blood and Ash came out in physical form this time, form this time, I think that now all of her books, because she just announced that on her website, you can order the, the Covenant series on paperback. And I cannot wait to get those books. That's what I'm going to get for Mother's Day for myself. And getting that, or you know what? I just might just get them and allow them to matriculate into my home one at a time without telling anybody. <laughs> But those are Jennifer L. Armentrout's books that I have read, and I cannot wait to get into From Blood and Ash. I'm only about 30% of the way through it, and it's good so far. So, you guys, I hope that was quick and easy. I have to go pick up my kids now from school, so I will see you tomorrow in my, um, my vlog for tomorrow. So, you guys, peace out. Good morning guys it is Wednesday if you guys hear Rocky chuffing he's pulling on the choke chain he's being a little punk right now because he's wants to go out and we're out but now he's being a manioso so now he wants to smell everything right now I really want to go for a run but I think I'm gonna take him for a walk around the block first drop him off, off, off at home and then go for a run because I can't run with him like this. He's just being, he's chomping at the bit and it's really, it's kind of pissing me off. Excuse me for saying that, but it's the truth. Uh, he frustrates me when I take him out sometimes because he gets all like bullheaded and he just like, this is my human, you can't cross that line. So right now I'm waiting for my Wednesday video to complete. It's, um, uh, what is it? Not downloading, but finish. It's, uh, it's, uh, I finished editing it. So now it's, I guess you would say downloading onto my phone so that I can download it or upload it to YouTube. So that's what I'm waiting for it to do right now. Um, so we're going for our morning walk. It's like the perfect temperature. It's around 67, 72 degrees between there right now. Look at him. Can you see him? He's being a little bugger right now. Come. And so we're just walking, but um, I will probably just crochet today and chill. I do have some whips that I need to get done. I'm probably not going to do a whip Wednesday today. <laughs> Stop. Come on. I guess there's new dogs in the neighborhood, so Rocky's like. But, all right guys, I'll check back in later. I'm listening to some music, um, check on my downloading video, and then I will um, come, come back on here in a bit.
Come on. See, he's a kid. Want to learn how to throw a punch? Hold your hands out like this. Straighten your wrist. Pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index. Curl. Don't do this, don't straighten it. Curl. Okay? It's got to be at the center of your palm. Loose. Make sure your wrist is straight. When you throw your punch, rotate. See how straight that is? Rotate. You want to connect with these two knuckles right here. Okay. The reason why we make that sound or that is because when you expel the air, when you connect, you put your whole body into it because the power comes from your legs, comes up, goes through. The air release gives it that much more power behind the punch lesson. <laughs> I'm listening to Melendez, Menendez. Uh, I don't even know the song. It's got a catchy beat though. <laughs> That's my whip Wednesday for me. I'm working on myself today. You guys get out there and work on yourself. Mental, physical, and emotional health. Hit a bag, makes me feel better. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, guys. It is Thursday. I just finished dropping my kids off at school. Um, I found out the other day that Target is having a buy two, get one free this week. And Jennifer L. Armentrout's um, books, the, the Covenant, that I just talked about on, what, Tuesday? <laughs> is on sale here at Target with the, it's included in the buy two, get one free. So the entire series could possibly be here. And if it is here, I'm getting it. And I'm just really excited right now. So I'm going to go into Target. If it's not at this one, I'm going to go, there's two more Targets that I know about, um, in two cities down. So I have to go to Hobby Lobby anyway. And when Target is near that one and past it. So we're going to go and check. So let's go see. <laughs> Okay, so they have the buy two get one free, I think. It doesn't say anything, but they have Cassandra Clare's new book, Sword Catcher. Ooh, Jennifer L. Armentrout, Fall of Ruin and Wrath. And right now I'm reading From Blood and Ash, you guys know that. I'm almost done with that. I only have a few more chapters, but I don't see any other of them any of Jennifer Lomontrop's other books. Al Kennedy's Deal, The Goal, The Score, Mistake, Yes! Uh, Rebecca Yarrow's romance books, but I'm not a fan of her romance books. I just like Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. And then I have a lot of Colleen Hoover and I am not, absolutely not a fan of Colleen Hoover. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera off and um, I'm gonna see what other books they have here and try to find, there's more books back here. Let's see if I can find any more Jennifer L. Armentrout books. Oh, they have Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone and then Six of Crows and then they have Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. Um, I'm just gonna keep looking. Oh, the prisoners on the cool prince. Holly Black. They have Holly Black. So I'm I'm torn whether I should get the fourth, like Iron Flame, because I don't have Iron Flame, and then get the last book in the Crescent City um, novels and series by by Sarah J. Mass. Ooh, Penelope Douglas. I like Penelope Douglas. She's good author, good author. All right, let me, because I'm, I'm just getting lost here. So let me, let me check it out and then I'll come back and let you guys know what I decided to get. Okay, so, oh, hold on. Wait, I had to clean my phone. So you guys, I just talked to the coolest person right now. She is so cool. Um, she checked to see if she could find the the books. Oh no, every dust cover I find is damaged. That looks like it's just a little bit of glue or something. I can live with that one because the other ones are all bent and worse than this. And this is 30% off on top of being $20. So I just talked to this girl and she's just like... She checked for me to see if the books were, you know, available. And I was just, yeah, I'm so thankful for that. She did that for me. And they're not available in any of the targets in my area or where I can go. So I'm pretty, pretty upset. So what I'm going to do right now is I just made the decision. I was going to get Iron Flame and um, House of Flame and Shadow and then get one free book because all the books are buy one to get one free. And I'm gonna get 
the goal, the deal by Al Kennedy because I love Al Kennedy. And you know what's so crazy is that I have read Al Kennedy's books and I don't like the new covers. I don't like the new covers. I'm not a fan of the new covers. I want the old covers. <laughs> Like, are these, the girls are in front of, these are the, these are not the original covers, though. So, the deal is the first one. It's with Graham and, um, Allie. And he calls her, um, uh, what does he call her? Will, oh, Hannah, not Allie. Allie is the second book with Dean. But Garrett calls her... I forget what he calls her, but he calls her by her last name. And then, oh, okay, put the goal back, the mistake, and the score. Okay. So that's four books. So it's buy two, get one free. And I'm bummed that they don't have the original cover for the deal. So they have just four books, and that is the whole first series because there's a spin-off and then there's I think there's a couple more over here that have the second generation which is the gram effect um so I'm gonna get that one and she's coming out with another one but they're all like 20% off let me put that here they're all 20% off so um, and they're $16.99. And then she has another book here called Girl Abroad. But I'm a huge fan of Al Kennedy. I read her a few years back. Like several, several years back. <laughs> so it's The Deal, the, the Mistake, The Goal, and The Score. I believe that's the order. Yeah. One... Let's see. The goal is four. Yes, the goal is last. So the deal, the mistake, the score. And then there's the legacy that goes for all the books. Like, it revisits all of the characters in the books. And it tells you where they're at. And then the Graham effect is Graham and Hannah's kid in this book so they start dealing with the newer generation so um i need one more book one more book and she has one right here that says girl abroad but i i don't know if i should do any of this guys maybe i should just do three books because i don't like this cover <laughs> I'm not a fan of cartoon looking stuff like this. I like real people. I like the original covers. Um, I'm not a fan of Colleen Hoover. Guys, don't ever read Colleen Hoover. She is dramatic and very tra traumatic. There's a little gnat. I'm not that fine enough. But I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. Because I see a whole, I see Sarah Jamas's books as well and it has all the newer covers I'm tempted to do that maybe I should just get books that I haven't read that are on my TBR and wait to get these I don't know so we'll figure it out These are all on my TBR. <laughs> generation how it began and I've read all the newer generations so I don't know what to do okay 
I'm just gonna browse, see what I wanna do because the books that I came here for are not here. <sighs> but there are, there are other books here that I'm interested in reading. So maybe I should check those out, which is, I believe, Frida McFadden, one by one, but I only see one of her books. So, and it's $14.39, but it's 20% off. So, might be just $10. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep browsing. I'll check back in in a bit and let you guys know what I get. Okay, so I left that Target. I'm going to Hobby Lobby right now because there's a couple of skeins of yarn that I wanna get and I hadn't been up to wanting to go anywhere the last couple days. I was gonna go yesterday, but for some reason, I forgot. <laughs> I just stayed home. I went running, that's what I did. I went running because I just got like this wild hair and I just needed to go run and do something um, and I chilled at home but I'm on my way to Hobby Lobby I didn't buy anything at Target but there is I have to go two towns over first of all <laughs> just to get to my Hobby Lobby and uh, there is two targets on either side the bookstore that I really want to go do isn't open until tomorrow so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna go to the bookstore after I drop off my old stuff, but it doesn't open till 11. So I think I'm gonna grab my crochet stuff, find a Starbucks, and crochet until the bookstore opens. It's because it's like a it's one of those con, not consignment bookstores, but it's just like one of those cheaper by the dozen type of bookstores. Um, so people donate books and then they resell them for like, like the cheapest book I've ever seen is like buy one, get one free or buy, uh, you buy five, you get them for a dollar and things like that. But I, I always have the kids with me when I'm there. So I never get the opportunity to browse, like really look around. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um. But I'm on my way to Hobby Lobby. We're going to go get some yarn. Yay! Okay, so I have the air conditioning on. I have you on the mount right here. And it's staying steady. So we're going to work with that. I'm going to just show you guys what I got. Uh, this was the last of the sea moss, like the mid-green color. And that's true to color right there. And I thought that this would be a good contrast color. And then I got this sea moss or spa. And this is more of like a mint, kind of like a robin's egg green as opposed to like a robin's egg blue. But you have these two contrasting colors that are on the cover of the book. I made sure that they were on the cover of the book. And I was just like, that works. And then I have that tur teal turquoise at home that works beautifully. I just have to frog those two rows or those two colors. So 10 rows, start with this one, go with this one and end with that um, like forest green. It's kind of like a turquoise green color. And then I couldn't find that brick red, but I did get something similar. So I only did one row of it, but I think I'm gonna frog the entirety of the second. And they, they with these, they had another one of these, but I didn't end up getting it. However, uh, this was the last one. But I, what I wanna do is I wanna see if it works. If it works, then I'm gonna come back next week, grab the extra colors in these colors, and, and then I'm gonna work up the other half of the Hexi Cardi. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> if you haven't been watching my vlogs, <clears throat> I'm trying to make hexi cardies to match the covers of books that I own at home. So I started with, uh, oh gosh, it's by Sabata here, uh, a torch, scorching torch or something like that. That's the title of it. I, that's not the title of it, but I'll put it right here. 
but the cover of the book has like these burgundies and reds and creams and oranges and burnt oranges. Well, I started out with like the cream color, but then I was just like, you know what, the cream, it, there's a lot of cream. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end with cream. So I'm gonna frog the entirety of, the entirety of it while I crochet a new side. So I got cranberry. I have this red at home. And I think that if I start with these colors, I will have enough for both sides and it's gonna look so good. But each book in that series, there's four books and I have all four books. Each book in that series has a different color cover. So this one is like a red burnt orange. Then the next one is like this green with the forests and I still have to go get those colors. I knew that was gonna happen. It's just snapping right now. And then there's, <clears throat> and then there's a purple and then the last book is blue. So, but they all have like this cream color to it. So I was just like, I'm loving it. So I got this one, it's cranberry. Okay, I'm gonna try to go fast here. It's cranberry, so I got cranberry. And then I, I got, this one's called City Beat, City Beat. Uh, I got this one because I wanted to make a triangle shawl Granny score triangle tassel shawl out of this. I'm losing my breath because if the air like shoots at my face, I, 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 it's like I'm gasping for air here. Um, so I got this one because I wanted to make, like I said, a triangle granny score shawl. And this is frustrating because it's just all wongo in here. So I just want to fix it really quick. But um, I last night sold a my uh fanny pack that i had made in this colorway and i was like so surprised that somebody was like hey do you do these it's actually my friend monica and she lives in arizona and i was like i she goes these are so cool i was like dude i actually made one and she was like show me pictures so i showed her she was like mine and i said okay so i sold it to her but it's not finished I, I needed to buy the straps for it and all the hardware for it. So I was just like, okay. Um, so I went and I grabbed the strap for it. It's just like the cream canvas um, binding or belting. And I got two yards just to make sure that I had enough. And then I got the lobster claw um, swivel head um, snap hooks. And then I got four D rings, so I can make, but I bought them in an inch and a half because I measured it up against this. This is about, it's slightly wider than an inch. So I had to get something that would cover it. And then I got an inch and a half of, and there's two of these um, rectangle buckles. So I bought those and then I saw some sports teams that they had there. So I grabbed, uh, the LA Dodgers and the Giants for baseball because I'm almost all out. I only have the Angels, one Angel wristlet, and I'm all out of, or I do have Padres, and that's it. And then I was looking, and I thought this was so perfect, you guys, so perfect for me because I'm a book reader and a crocheter. It says, I like my books, but I love my hooks. I was like, I needed this. So I grabbed it, so it's a bookmarker. It was only $2.99. The little ascent, like the little accessories or the, yeah, crochet accessories there, it doesn't, they, they don't ever really go on sale. So, um, except for when there's a clearance going on during the summertime, then these go on clearance. But I had to get this bookmarker. And then I got myself this uh, I Make Pretty Things booklet that I've really been wanting for a while, my yarn stash. Because I forget what hook size I use, what weight the yarn is. I always forget. I grabbed, there, there was only two of them, so I grabbed both of them just in case I ran out. And then you could put your projects in here and Let's see, it says skein ball weight, grams and ounces, skein ball amount, yard and meters. 
the color number, the lot number, the quantity of yarn you use for this project. You put your name and your brand, your fiber content, so if it's acrylic and stuff, hook needle size, the gauge, washing instructions, additional notes. I thought that was so amazing. So your, like your name, I'm not gonna put my name on it. Okay, so everything on this mount just like completely broke. Everything that you heard popping just broke off. So, but, um, so instead of your name, you could put the name of the creator and your brand. You could put the name of the project that you're using and then lace weight, super fine, fine, light, medium, bulky, super bulky, jumbo. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. So, zero through seven and I was just like yes that is what I need but I almost broke my bank with this one guys I have a certain amount of because I give myself you know a certain amount like I, I I set a budget for myself and that's what I got today and I think that's gonna be it for me vlogging today I might show you working on the half of the hexi cardi and then, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm gonna work on the Hexi Cardi when I get home because it's around 10.20 right now, almost 10.30. I need to go get something to eat. Um, they're all out of the books by Jennifer L. Armentrell. So I'm not happy about that. However, <laughs> it's okay, I guess. I don't really need books right now. I'm gonna go eat something. I wish I would have brought my project with me. That way I could have worked on it at Barnes & Noble and grabbed a, you know, a matcha lavender latte. Those are really good. But I'm near that one store, Kung Fu Tea, and they have my matcha sesame seed tea, so I'm gonna go get that. And then I'm gonna go grab myself something to eat and head home. So, but all right guys, I'll see you in a second.
Hey guys, it is Friday. I went to the farm down the way and guess what I just found before I took off? They have like this feeding and um, like area with animals and stuff for the kids and I'm leaving and I see this little mailbox and it says leave a book, take a book. So I just bought a stinking, look at that. 20 bucks right there. Okay, that's 20 bucks. But and they're both Nicholas Sparks and uh, Mary Higgins Clark's Mystery and Romance. But I'm going to grab this one. See if there's books inside of it. If there is, I'm going to take one and leave one. Here is a little free library. This is so cool. <gasps> Look at it! And look at that! The return of Nicholas Sparks. The Lion and the Witch. Oh my gosh, look at all of this. This is crazy. So I'm gonna leave a Nicholas Sparks book. I'm gonna look, look at this. This is so awesome. And I'm gonna take this, the return. Oh, there's another one, a message in a bottle. I'm not a fan of that one with that movie. Actually, I'm not a fan of that movie with uh, Kevin Costner and I think somebody else, but this is so cool. Look at this. I wish that there was one with, um, with yarn in it somewhere in the darkness. Walter Demers. It is freezing cold right now. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Ooh. That's this one right here. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh my, that's C.S. Lewis. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. These are all these books. That's that's awesome. This is so cool, you guys. I didn't, I, 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 when I went to Boston, I saw them there. Saint Odd. I saw them there. And let's see what is this. But I didn't see. I have never seen one here, so read is reading is reading. Let's see if I can close this now. There. Okay, closed it. So that's so funny. Put one in, take one out. So ah, uh, I'm excited that I was able to do this. Here's the little farm. I have, I don't want to get the kids, so they're on the other side, but there's a peacock over there. But guys, that was, that was fun to do. Never done that before. Um, did buy yarn today at Walmart, but only one. Ugh, you get that cow stench? <laughs> I only bought one cake of yarn because last time I was there, I grabbed the blue one, and it's the, um, the Mandala Lion Brand Ombre, and I bought the blue one, but they didn't have any more blue. So today, when I went, they did have blue. So I grabbed the other blue, and that's all I bought. Um, today I'm just chilling. Right now, I'm on my way home because I went grocery shopping and everything, and I'm going to go to another bookstore that has um, cheap, cheap, cheap. Like you guys, okay. I bought 20 books for $20 because they're nothing but Mary Higgins Clark. Okay. I have this one in paperback, but <laughs> I got, it. I had to get it again. Oh, so all of these books, um, look at before I say goodbye, I think I might have this one in my garage. I don't know, but I have so many Mary Higgins Clark books and she has been writing for many, 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 many years. So she has so many books out there that I can't even, I like, I barely have the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Maybe like 10% of her books, but I have tons of her books, tons, tons, tons. My dad used to buy them at the store on his way home. Whenever he noticed that I was like water wandering around and didn't know what to do, I'd go running. And, um, my favorite time to run was at night when everybody was like asleep in their homes and that was dangerous for a teenager. But so he would 
on his way home, he would gra grab a book for me and then put it in a bag and hang it on my door uh, the next morning so that when I woke up and left for school, I would find my book and I'd be excited to come home and read it. <laughs> That's one good thing I remember. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, I've always been a reader, always been a crocheter um, since I was young, young. And I mean, they had to find things to help me with my ADHD and still to this day, it's still my solace. It's still my calming, my hiding place, my, my refuge, my namesake. So, um, the rest of the day, uh, I might take my kids to the movies because my younger son wants to go see King Kong. So I might do that. But I'm going to go to another bookstore because I thought I was going to be paying $40 for that stack because the hardbacks were $2 each and the paperbacks were a dollar. And they were, I, I bought 10 hardbacks and I think 10 paperbacks or maybe 12 hardbacks and 8 paperbacks. And that's ridiculous, right? But then I walk in and they're like, hey, don't forget, it's the two for one deal today. And I was like, you're joking. They're like, no, it's two for one. I was like, what? And it came out to $21 because I had two extra books. And she goes, it's okay. Just give me 20 bucks. I was like, what? So I thought I was paying $40 for all those books. No, cut that in half, buddy, because I got half of those books for free. <laughs> Majority of them for free or, you know, less than half, but but that is it for me today, you guys. I realized that I spoke a lot about books this week um, and not too much about yarn. My bad. Uh, I Next week is going to be more prep. I don't know if I'm going to be going to market tomorrow because it says it's supposed to rain. But then I checked and said rain will start in the afternoon. And this morning I checked again and it said... Um, showers will be um, sporadic throughout morning but definite showers if afternoon and beyond and market ends at 12 30 but my the coordinator the manager Pam she she lives near me so I'm gonna meet up with her later on and give her my orders for my customers to come and pick them up at market if I don't end up going. And to be honest with you guys, I'm so exhausted. Tell me why I'm exhausted. Ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I just am. I've been trying to read um, the next book in the series from Blood and Ash because I finished it yesterday and I started the new one and I'm on chapter, I believe I'm on chapter, let me see. I'm on chapter 14 and I'm listening to the audio book. And it's so good. So, so, so good. So unexpected things that are happening. And just like Jennifer L. Armentrout to, to save that shocker for, from you. <laughs> so right now I'm just sitting in my car, still at the farm. I grab chocolate milk and a chocolate chip crispy cookie. I have to have this crispy cookie, but I'm going to go home right now. Uh, I went grocery shopping, so I have to unload my car. Sorry, my face is all windblown and extremely splotchy right now because um, I'm still recovering from my anemia about this earlier this week. So I'm going to unload the car and eat. I bought myself some corned beef hash because I saw it and I was like, ooh, that sounds good right now. It just reminds me of my kid days when my grandma used to make it for me with a... a a bolita egg like a sunny side up egg on top of it and then I bought myself some French bread it sounds good to put it on some French bread with some cheese and put it in the toaster Woo! make you guys hungry didn't I <laughs> alright guys that is it for me today I will see you next week on Monday um, Lord willing we'll see what I do for tomorrow for market I don't know we'll see we'll see I don't know I don't know but you guys have a blessed rest of your Friday blessed rest of your weekend and I will see you next time. <laughs> Peace out.